Hey guys, welcome back to another Shear Moment Diagram example. And firstly, I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird. I am trying to get over this cold that I had for a few days. So just make like a teddy and bear with me. <laughs> okay, that was a really lame joke. But anyway, let's just get on with the example. So in this example, we have a pin and a roller and we have a beam with overhang. And we have a three kip load applied at point A and a 10 kip load applied at point C. And I've gone ahead and drawn in the dimensions here. A and B are spaced two feet apart and then the pin and the roller are six feet apart. And the 10 kips is applied directly in the middle of span B, D at point C. So in this part, we're actually just going to set up the free body diagram and look at our internal positive moment and shear sign conventions that we'll use to later on figure out what our shear and our moment diagrams should look like. So with any great shear moment problem, the very first thing we wanna do is draw our free body diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the beam. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and label the points. This is point A, and then we have point B here, and then we have point C, and then finally point D. And then we have this three kips of force here at point A, and then this 10 kips force at point C. And then finally our reactions. We have a roller here at B, so this is only gonna supply a vertical reaction, which I'll just call BY. And then over here at D, we have a vertical DY reaction and a horizontal DX reaction. So there it is, our free body diagram. Now what we can do is figure out what these unknown reactions are using our static equilibrium equations. So the very first one I can do is actually the sum of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. And I'm gonna say to the right is positive. Well, in the x direction, we only have dx, and there's no other force, so, so dx is automatically equal to zero. This is equal to zero kips. All right, so the next thing I can do is actually take the moment about point D and figure out what by is, this vertical reaction here at B. So I'm gonna do sum of moments at point D, and I'm gonna say counterclockwise is positive, and this should equal zero. So firstly, we have this 10 kips here, so 10 kips times the distance from D, and that's just three feet, right? So three feet, and then we have this vertical reaction, BY, and that's gonna create a clockwise moment about point D, so this is gonna be minus BY times the distance, which is six feet. And then finally, our three kips here at point A, that's gonna create a counterclockwise moment. So it's gonna be three kips times that distance. So six plus two is eight feet, and that needs to equal zero. Well, 10 times three is 30 kip foot minus by times six feet plus three times eight is 24 kip feet and that needs to equal zero. So if I add by to both sides, or by times six to both sides, I have by times six feet is equal to, well, 30 plus 24 is 54 kip feet. And if I divide both sides by six, I get by is equal to nine kips. There you go. So that is our vertical reaction, by, which is nine kips. And then finally, I can do sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero with up being positive. So I have this minus three kips here on point A, and then I have our newly found reaction, By, which is going up, and that's nine kips. And then I have this minus 10 over here, so minus 10 kips, and then finally plus dy and this needs to equal zero. Well, negative three plus nine is six, minus 10 is negative four kips, plus dy is equal to zero. And if I add four kips to both sides, I get dy is equal to four kips. So there you go. That is our vertical reaction here at point D. So great, we have our vertical reactions. We have actually all of our reactions for this beam. And the next thing we wanna do is use this information to come up with our shear diagram. So we are going to draw the shear diagram right here. But before I do, I actually wanna go over internal positive sign convention for shear and moment. So whenever we look at a beam or a structural element internally, so when we take a cut and look at what's going on inside the member, let's say I have this little member here. 
the positive sign convention for shear and moment is as follows. So for the shear, the shear on the right should be going down and the shear on the left should be going up. And I'm just going to label this V. And the internal moments should cause this beam to deflect like this. So we want one moment here internally and another moment there. So there is our air head. And that would be our internal moment. For negative sign convention, we have that same small portion of the beam, but now on the right hand side our shear is going up and on the left hand side our shear is going down. So it's the opposite of what the positive sign convention here is. And our internal moments should cause this beam to bend like this. So a frowny face, right? So the internal moment will be like that on the left and like that on the right. So this is a negative sign convention for internal shears and moments and this is positive for internal shears and moments. And before we actually jump into the second part where we draw our shear diagram, what I like doing in a lot of my shear and moment diagram problems is actually drawing guidelines between the free body diagram, the shear diagram, and later on the moment diagram. So what I mean by that is at every significant point, so in this case A, B, C, and D, I'm just gonna draw vertical lines that will help me construct the shear diagram and the moment diagram later, just so things are nice and neat and clean. So I'll just go ahead and fill in those lines here, just like that. So now we have these vertical guidelines that will help us draw our shear and moment diagrams a little neater, a little cleaner, and just to keep things nice and tidy. So in the next part, we're gonna go ahead and start drawing our shear diagram based off of the reactions and the forces on this free body diagram. So see you in that part.